for this glorious month of August 2023. I speak to pay. I speak to pay. Every spirit of pay. I command to in the name of Jesus Christ as I go in Jesus
as he himself is carried. Now we proceed from there. The word of God said that David woke up one day in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 9. And this was what happened that brought about the ministration this morning. 2 Samuel chapter number 1, 9 verse number 1. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is laid on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Micah, the son of Amiel in Lodeba. Then the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Amiel from Lodeba. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come into David, he fell on his face and did reverence, and David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan's thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of thy of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, servant, Saul's servant, and said on him, I have given unto thy servant Saul all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring him fruit that thy servant, the master Samson, may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen and twenty servants. Fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, according to all that my, my lord the king had commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was laid both in his feet. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. This was a very pathetic story. A young man that's supposed to be a prince in Israel. His name was Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. Let me start that story again. Let me do it in a Jackie style so that I'll come back. Let's start with Mephibosheth. Because we talk little about Mephibosheth most of the times. Mephibosheth was a prince. He was the son of Jonathan. Mephibosheth was born and he was five years old. He was born a great man. He was born into the royal palace of Israel. Very privileged child. But his life turned around. Five years old he was. When the death came and took away his father, Jonathan, and his grandfather, the king of Israel. So, the same day. And Mephibosheth was five years old. And as the nurse that was nursing Mephibosheth, well, there was, there was, there was, there was crisis in the land. When they heard that the king was dead, and even this king's son was dead, and the Lord of Israel was dead, and the ark of God was taken away by the, by the enemies. So there was crisis in town. The nurse was carrying 
Mephibosheth five years as he was trying to escape. Mephibosheth's feet now broke. They now dropped him. And the Mephibosheth two feet became lame. It was not that Mephibosheth was born lame. He was born great. But situation made him lame. And that was the beginning of the sorrow of Mephibosheth. That was a turnaround negatively to this young man called Mephibosheth. Everything changed. The good history of being in royalty and as a prince turned around. And Mephibosheth became to live in penury. Mephibosheth became to be in want. In fact, all the children of Saul were cut off. The glad wanted them and Mephibosheth had no other place to go. So he had to go to a city called Lodebar. I will tell you again more about the city that Mephibosheth ran into. They took him as a son. He did not decide. They took him as a boy. He did not decide to go to the city. Maybe the nurse that was taking care of him was from that city. So the nurse had to return with the prince of Israel to a place of no prayer called Lodeba. Now, what is the meaning of Lodeba? The city that Mephibosheth ran into and he was there nursing all his problems. Now, I will tell you, Lodeba means place of no part shop. Lodeba means place of no world. Lodeba means place of no communication. Lodeba means place of rebellions. Lodeba means barren place. A place that cannot yield. That was a prince living in a place of barrenness. Sometimes in life, destinies can turn. Good destinies can turn and become something else. That was exactly what happened to our brother Mephibosheth. A prince of Israel now found himself in a city of Lodeba, a place of no bread, no communication, a place of no government, a place that had not a barren place. And Mephibosheth was on in this land for years. He grew up there, he married there, he gave birth there in a place of no bread, in a place of scarcity. A lot of things must have been going on in the life and the heart of Mephibosheth. Sometimes he will ask himself, am I a prince or am I not a prince? I was told I was a prince, but there is nothing at all in reality that was in me. You know, sometimes situation can turn you around in life that you start asking yourself a lot of questions. A lot of promises that you know that was made on your behalf. A lot of prophetic words that have been released unto you. Start asking yourself, does it mean that all this is perfect? What is happening to me? Nothing is happening that is positive. Everything is bad, just like you never are. Maybe Moshe must have been praying also. Because then they ascended on the throne. Even in the book of 1 Samuel, the moment Saul died, David entered and became a king. But nothing happened to Mephibosheth. But one day, something happened to Mephibosheth. And I prophesy today, something will happen to you. I don't care where you are staying. You may be staying in Lodeba. But God has long arm to deliver. God's arm can reach anywhere to deliver this world. May he push it, everybody has written him out. People have forgotten that he belonged to the household of royalty or in Israel. Everybody has written off and nothing was towards Mephibosheth. Nobody had any good thing taken towards Mephibosheth. He was forgotten. And a lame man that had no help forgotten at a place of no bread called Lodeva. Was 
lost. He lost his identity. He lost his identity. It's just like Naomi. Naomi said, Don't call me. Don't call me Naomi again. Call me Mara. My name is no more sweet. Call me Peter. Why? Because of situation. He lost a limelight. He lost two sons. He lost everything he had. And he decided to change his name from Naomi to Mara. At Lodeva, situation knows how to make people to lose their identity. You knew how God was working with you before. You knew the beauty and glory that God has bestowed upon you. But devil has come to steal everything and you look at yourself in the mirror and you start asking yourself, is it me? I have good news for you today. The God that delivered Mephibosheth from Lodeba, the strength arm of God is upon you today. I can tell you today you shall be delivered in the name of Jesus. Now, Mephibosheth changed his name from Mephibosheth, the prince, to dead dog. He saw himself, if you go to that book of First Samuel chapter 9 verse 8, he, he, what he was calling himself was a dead dog. He was not calling himself dog, but a dead one. When David saw him, and David was telling him what to do for him, he said, why are you interested in him who was a dead dog. That was what Lodeba happens to people. That was how Lodeba faced people. They will lose their total quality in life. They will lose everything that God has made to them and they will not decide to go by another name that devil has implanted in their name. Every name that is not a name that God has given unto you today. Today I erase such names from your identity in the name of Jesus. If you understand what happened, you will know why God decided to put this place in the scripture. Mephibosheth started praying. As he was praying, God began to act. So one day David was asleep, fast asleep in his palace. And as he was enjoying his sleep, God spoke to him and said, David, you are in grace. David said, My Lord, what have I done? Say, David, a man that secured your life, protected you, a man that risked his life because of your sake, that love is so much. You have abandoned the promise that you made unto this young man. David said, Who? God said, Jonathan. Jonathan. You have forgotten and abandoned Jonathan and his seeds. So David woke up with guilt. And David made an announcement in all the radio stations and all the television stations and all the media stations in Israel and said, listen, I, there is something I want in this country. Is there anyone that is still left? He may even know that there was one that was from the line of Jonathan. He was asking because he needed to pay. He needed to, to, to redeem. He needed to make restitution of what he has refused to do in life. God will put in the heart and in the mind of the people. They are not going to sleep until they remember you today in the name of Jesus. Any man or woman that God has ordained for your destiny, that has not acted concerning your life, God is going to give them sleepless night today. It can only take God to touch the heart of man. The heart of man can never be touched by man. It can only take God to touch the heart of man. God went into the house and God went into the palace 
Because he's the one that ordained kings. He began to turn the hand of David. And David woke up and said, Listen, I need any man that is connected to Saul. I want to show him kindness. I am indebted to kindness from my friend Jonathan. I have been king and I have forgot everything about him. I need a man from there. And the next thing they saw, they brought Siba. And they said, This is Siba. He said, David said, Are you Siba? He said, Yes. Who are you to Saul? He said, I was a servant. You are a servant. Say yes. He said, Listen, I am indebted to my friend Jonathan. I needed to make you favor. I could not sleep yesterday night because of him. Can I get anybody that is connected to Saul or Jonathan? The man said, Don't worry about Saul. Jonathan has a, a son. And then he said, Is he still alive? He said, Yes. But he's laying on his feet. Then he said, That is no problem. Where is he? And Ziba said, He is in the house of Micah, the son of Amir. Then he said, Where? He said, At low temper. Then he said, Hey! How can a priest stand at low temper? I want to go say, Then he sent to fetch him out of Lebanon. I see you being sent to fetch out of every low temper. So normal way, this man woke up. He was moving on the ground, crawling on the ground as a lame, trying to see what we eat that day. The way usually struggle, and he now saw a fleet of chariots and he saw presidential vehicle that parked in front of his house. And they were asking, "Where is Mephibosheth?" And the Mephibosheth came out and said, "Have I committed any crime? The president is looking for me. What have I done again?" And he said, no, you have not committed any crime. But the president wants you at the palace. And he said, let me lock up my door. Let me put things right. They told him we don't have to put anything right. You are not coming back here again. You are not coming back to London again. Leave all the properties and go to palace. Ah, today, today, I see a transformation in your life that will turn around your captivity in the name of Jesus. And the man was looking, am I dreaming? And, and, and maybe soon I will wake up. I know that this is a dream. God just wants to give me a sweet dream because I've been having bad time. Okay, and it's even better to stay in this dream, not to wake up. And as he carried him, they went and brought him to palace. And he saw the king that he has received on television. He has been watching David on television. So that day he saw David live. And David stood with all his family. And when he came, David asked him, Are you a people chef? Yes. Who is your father? He said, My father was the late Jonathan, the prince of Israel. And David hugged him. And David started shedding tears. He said, so What is happening? He said, Your father, your father saved my life. Your father loved me more than he would love himself. He said, listen, Mephibosheth, you are not going back to Lodeba. He said, this is what will happen to you. From today, I'm going to adopt you as one of my sons. The food that my children eat, the same meal they will serve you. If they are going for shopping for clothes, you will join them. Anything my children have, you are part of this family. And the man was looking at them and he said, Oh no, they no. King, what is going on? And the people said, He said, I know. I'm not doing it because of you. I'm doing it because your father sowed a seed in my life. The seed of kindness. And I promise your father I'm going to return it. And that seed is what I'm returning today. He said, Listen, from today, if I sit down on the table to eat with my children, a chair will be provided for you to eat with us. Ah, somebody can understand this. Ah, there is going to be a change of status that you never prayed for, that you never, you never, you never, you never even see, you never even foresee that will come to pass. God is going to bring it unto you in the name of Jesus.
overnight. The people said became something else. God lifted this young man up, positioned him to become a prince, and he became one of the children of David by adoption. He enjoyed everything in the palace. He did not stop there. Somebody say he did not stop there. David now turned to the man that went and brought him the servant of Saul. I said, Ziba, the son. He said, you see this young man, my friend Saul says, he said, from today, I'm going to restore all the land that Saul the king was owing, was having when he was on the throne. All the land of Saul that were been taken over by the government, I'm going to restore it. And I'm going to do it in the name of this man that is on the floor crawling. The name of Bavigo He says, Ziba, how many children do you have? Ziba said he had 15 children. How many servants do you have? Ziba said he had 20 servants. He said, okay. Ziba, from today, you, your children, your servants, shall become servants to Mephibosheth. You should be working for him. Everything work you have to is not your employer. You are his employees. When you bring things, he will pay you your salary. You go and work for him. So one day, it does not take God the whole eternity to change the situation. Ah, it does not take him. I can see somebody's situation being changed. Saul, Saul's son delighted much in David 
and Jonathan told David, say, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take it to thyself unto the morning, and abide in his secret place, and hide thyself. All the evil plans of Saul was lit by his son to David, because Jonathan loved David so much, and he sowed a seed of kindness. If you start reading there, you start seeing series. Series. After that place in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 20, if you read verse, from verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 20. And then he fled from Nayon to Ramah and came and, and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? In this place, we go down. Jonathan started swearing to David. There is no way I can be alive and see my father kill And there is nothing my father will do that will not tell me. I will make sure that I protect him. All throughout his time, he was swearing. If you go precisely to 12 and 13, you see what you told David there. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord, God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow, anytime, on the third day, and behold, India be good towards David, and I then sent not unto, unto thee. And so he did. The Lord do so and more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do the evil, then I will show it thee and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace. And as the Lord be with thee, and as he has been with my father. He was swearing to protect David. All the way, Jonathan was swearing that he will protect David. But there is something I want to bring out before I close the chapter of that of Jonathan this morning. That seed. Kindness is a seed. In the, in the same place, in the book of uh, 1 Samuel 14 to 17, look at how Jonathan placed a demand that David must re re reward him back with all the kindness he has been showing him. 1 Samuel 20 from 14. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord that I, I did and I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off my kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord had cut off the enemies of David, everyone from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand as David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him, for he loved him. As the Lord is God, so then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and that shall be missed, because the seed thy seed shall be empty. Praise God. Hallelujah. He told David, He said, Listen, this kindness I bring to you, you will reward me. Even if I'm not there, my seed, my children must reward them because I know God is going to cut off your enemies and He's going to make you a king. And that was why David had to. Be indebted and indicted to wake up and start being desperate towards looking for who that will show kindness for Jonathan's sake. So, kindness is a seed. Anytime you see kindness, just know that it's a seed. If people have done, done kindness to you, you go there, it's a seed. Don't be part of people that frustrate those that help them out. Is a very bad thing to pay people back with their kindness. They now use evil to pay back. Is a is a generational evil that also is a seed negative. Kindness is a seed. When children of Israel, God gave them the land of Babylon or the land of Jericho. They sent some people there. To go and spy out the land. And because of that, they met an harlot. Her name was Rahab. Rahab now placed a demand on the, on the, on the, on the, on the spies. If you go to Joshua chapter 2, 11 13, you see what Rahab, the kindness that Rahab did to them by protecting them, he demanded. So he, 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 he demanded for a reward there. Joshua chapter 2, 11. And as soon as we have prayed thee, these things, our hearts did melt. 
Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, be it, is God in heaven above and earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, say, since I have shown you kindness, that ye shall also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father, my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that are, and deliver our lives from death. Praise God. Rehab, say this, Rehab said, you are going to show me kindness. I will show you kindness by protecting you for not you not to be killed, but you are going to reward me in kindness. And Joshua did not fail that when it was time for the war. In the book of Joshua chapter 6, Joshua chapter 6, I will read just because of time, I will read 17. Joshua 6 17. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are daring to the Lord. Only the heart, the heart shall live. She and all that are with her in the house. Because she hid the messengers that we sent. Now, if you go also to 25, you see how it happened. And Joshua saved Rahab, the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel, even unto this day, because she had hid the messengers. Which Joshua said to spite our children. Somebody say, kindness is a sin. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If you go and check also a, an old man that did great favor to David, his name was Basila. Basila in the book of First Samuel. Okay, Second Samuel, chapter 17. Second Samuel chapter 17, Basila was an old man that was 160 years old. He was, he was, he was an old man, very old man, but he had very good heart. Second Samuel 17, 27. And I read, and it came to pass, when David was come to Mahibre, and showed that the son of Nahat, of Rabbah, of the children of Amin, and Micah the son of Amin, of Lodeba, and Basila the Gileadite of Rodeba, brought bears and braces and earthly vessels, and wheat, and belly, and flour, and parched corn, and beans, and lentils, and parched pores, and honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of kind, and de for David, and for the people that were with him to eat. For they say the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. This was an old man that administered to David when he was running away from Absalom. He gave him a lot of things, all these things to sustain him. Was kind, was kind to him. And when it was time, there was a, it was a great time for kindness. When it was time, when David came back to reclaim his kingdom, David now told the old man, You are going with me because I'm going to nourish you until you die. Look at what happened when David was going back. In verse 19, chapter 19, from 31. 19 from 31. And Basila the Kilianite came down from Regolim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now, Basila was a, a very aged man, even four score years old, and he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay in Mahanam, for he was a great man. And the king said unto Basila, Come, come over with me, and I will feed thee with me in, in Jerusalem. And Basila said unto king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am I am this day first four years old. Can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and, and, and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant yet be a body unto my Lord the king? The, thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should thy servant recompense 
eat me with such a war. Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, and I may die in my own city. I be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. But behold, thy servant, Shiha, and he let him go over with, with, with my lord, the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Shema, shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall be good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And the people went over to them, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Basila and blessed him, and they returned unto his own place. A 160 year old man entered ministry to David, and no man came to welcome David when he was coming back to his palace after Absalom was defeated. And David said, Listen, I want to reward you for your kindness. Follow me, I will nourish you. The old man said, No, I am 160 years. I cannot even taste the good food again. Nothing entices me on it again. So I will better stay here. I will die here very close to my father's house and I will be buried here. If I go with you, I will be a warning to you. He said, Well, look at my son. My son is here. Take my son and do him those kindness that you want to do to me. And then he told the son, I said, No problem. Come over. I want to do kindness and show kindness that your father showed to me. I want to show it to you. Kindness is the same. Somebody say, Kindness is the same. And when David was about dying, David told his son, Solomon, look at what he told him concerning the son of Basila and how he should treat them all the days of their life with him. In the word of God, look at 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 7. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 7. David was about dying and was telling Solomon he should not forget to show kindness. 2 7. But show kindness unto the sons of Basila, the Gileadites. And let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom thy brother. Praise God. I want to talk to somebody by God's word. The good things that your father did to people, the good seeds that your father sowed, and they are yet to recover with it. Today I provoke the spiritual realm. Any man or woman that is well to do, that your, your parents show kindness, that are yet to show you kindness, they will not have peace again. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't understand. That's why it took time to teach about the seed in kindness. Every seed is a seed, every kindness is a seed. Most of us, our parents use their resources to do a lot of things for people. And today they cannot do it for you. I want to prophesy and talk to you now. I want to prophesy in the spiritual realm. Any man or woman that is indebted to your generation, that is yet to come forth and show kindness unto you, today I command their peace to be taken away until they do it in the name of Jesus. They will not sleep until they reward the sin of perfection for you. As we close the service, time will not permit us. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 2, David said, Listen, the king of the Ammonites Ammonite, show me kindness. I want to show his son kindness also. The son's name was Harun. David said, I want to show him kindness. The father showed me kindness when I was still roaming the streets. I want to show the son kindness. In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 2. Now, is a sin. Is a sin. When Abigail came out to come and give David what he demanded from Nabal, I could not give him. Abigail told David, "Say, listen, I'm giving you this can show you kindness. But remember, when you become the king, when God establish you, don't forget me. Show me kindness." And David did not wait until he became the king. The moment Naba died, David went straight and said, Abigail, you are going to be my wife. The same kindness he showed in David. And so Abigail now had the opportunity of becoming honorary, becoming the queen, becoming law in the palace. Why? She showed kindness. 
This kindness protects. The Gibeonites, there was famine in Israel. The book of Second Kings, chapter 9, verse 11. There was famine in, a, in, a, in, a, in Israel. And when there was famine, the, the Gibeonites now demanded that they should kill. Um, no, it was the book of um, first, Second Samuel, chapter 11. Second Samuel, chapter 11. There was famine. So David now asked, why is it famine? Where is there famine in this land? They say, Saul killed the Gibeonites because they made covenant with Joshua and Saul now killed them. And that's why God was punishing the country of Israel. And David now said, what do we do to get out of this famine? They now call the Gibeonites. God says, it's because of you that is punishing us. What will we do so we can pacify you? The Gibeon said, the only thing you can do is to bring the seven sons of the man that killed us. So we can now kill them and there will be no more famine. And who was the man that killed them? Saul. And who was part of the Saul's family? The same the people we will talk about. Supposed to be part of the people Jonathan uh, David will bring out. But look at how David handled it. David never bring out Mephibosheth out for them to kill. David hid Mephibosheth and protected him because of the oath he took with his father. Look at, as we are closing right now, 2 Samuel chapter 11. No, not 11%, I'm getting now. Book of the second Samuel. When um, when there was serious famine in Israel, David now went into making inquiry from God. What is the cause? In book of Second Samuel chapter twenty one. Look at what verse 1. And there was a famine in the days of David, three years. Years after years, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for the soul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Then the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul so, sought to slay them in the zeal of the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto his the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And where shall I make the atonement that ye bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold nor of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for, for us shall thou keep any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say that will I do for you? And they answered and became. the king. The man that consumed us and that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from the many of the entire coast of Israel. Let seven, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we hand them up unto the Lord in Gibeonite of Saul, whom the Lord did choose, and the king said, I will give. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Because of the Lord's oath that was between them. Because David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. Praise God. He spared Mephibosheth because of oath. He still showed kindness and spared him and released other children of Saul for them to be hanged. Seven sons of Saul were hanged. That is kindness, is a seed. And when we follow it as a seed, observe it. When we are dealing with people, we show kindness. And also, God will be able to make all kindness that we have shown to become seed that will return unto back. Not just to us, but to our generation. I see it coming to pass in somebody's life in Jesus' name. Let's be our feet. I want you to pray for yourself this morning as we close. And say, God, it is my turn to show kindness. Show me kindness, O Lord. It is my turn to be shown kindness, O Lord. Open your mouth and talk to God. It is my turn. 
They are asking who is the next turn to be shown kindness. It is my turn. It is turn of my household. We are qualified. We are here, O oh Lord. We position ourselves for the next turn. Lord, thank you for his turn to be shown kindness. Open your mouth and pray for you. Pray for your household. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, most powerful name, we are praying. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Give us grace to show kindness unto the lives of people, Lord. And give us harvest of kindness, even to us and to our generations in the name of Jesus. I come everyone in the house with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you have not received Christ in your life as your personal and Savior, today is that time. It's time to do it and to get it right. Anywhere you want to start asking for forgiveness of sins right now. I God should forgive your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. Every sin that is hindering you not to enjoy God's kindness. This morning you can now, you can, you can erase those sins with the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to confess those sins that will hinder you from having access to Jesus. This morning, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you want Jesus in your life, you say this prayer of faith after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Thank you for saving me from my sins and Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, your grace has brought these ones. Let them preserve them, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your kindness will reach unto them now that they have received you. And doors of favor shall be opened unto them. Lord, I pray they will not go back to their sins, but they will be qualified and stand firm in faith that the day will come, they shall not be found wanting. Thank you for your prayers. In Jesus Christ, we must powerful name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.